trouble connecting to realtors? Is it a tough time? Does it feel awkward when you call on realtors because you don't know what to say or your employer wants you just to stop in open houses and you don't even know how to act? <laughs> so watch this video because if you are a self-gen agent right now and you're trying to establish relationships with referral partners like realtors, this, that, or the other, you're definitely gonna wanna watch this video. I'm gonna give you three tips that is gonna completely change your game and ramp up your production so you are positioned correctly in 2024. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sales Remastered. My name is D and I'm your host. <laughs> I love that intro. So check this out. I'm putting together a video specifically for self-gen agents. I already made a, you know, a video of how to generate leads in a call center. I made another one on uh, how to generate leads as a mortgage broker. This one is much, much well deserved and sought after. And it's how, as a self-gen agent, can you attract referral partners? How do you approach realtors? So I'm gonna give you three fundamental tips. If you incorporate these and you, you come at it with an open mind, then I not only know you'll win, but damn near guarantee that bitch. So listen up, before I even go into it, understand first off the dynamics, right? Because one of the most important skills in sales is empathy. Empathy is a talent. Empathy means that you, know, you understand the situation. You know how to read the room. And so with empathy, what we're gonna do is we're gonna first look at it through the realtor's eyes because that is our target, right? That's our audience. And so what is the realtor currently right now going through? What they're going through, have been through, right? Harass you at your open house. <laughs> Can I go solicit your borrowers? Can I get your dead deals, <laughs> right? And so that's what they're going through. Of course, it's definitely difficult on top of that, the current market. You know how many people who entered escrow fell out of escrow? <laughs> You know how many realtors are so not only frustrated, but fearful and scared? Again, empathy, just like us, because there was a good time during the pandemic where business was booming, right? It was the right time to be a realtor. Same thing with an LO. You know, business was booming. It was the right time to be an LO. And then the market changes. What happens? Everything around you changes. Your income changes. Your production drops. And loyalty becomes even stronger. And that's why it's hard to, you know, leave a company. And when realtors, since they're also technically self-employed, right? Just like you, self -gen, they get paid on business that closes. They don't get paid on meet and greets. <laughs> they don't get paid by you coming by their open house and giving them a pen with your name on it. That doesn't feed their kids. So I think we gotta start there because if we start there, then we understand what they're going through. So in order to actually win over realtors and attract the referral partners, you have to actually be the first to provide value. And when I say value, I'm not talking about, you know, like free coffee or you're gonna buy them lunch. What I'm talking about value is an opportunity for them to make money. If you think about it, LOs are simply kind of like with their handout or like that empty cup, right? With a couple pennies in it. We're the LO asking realtors for change. Hey man, you got any spare change? That's kind of like, right? What do we naturally say? Nah, man, sorry, I don't got no cash on me. They are wired in a way to now give us that defense, to give us that response, even though they could probably need help. So instead of being the one asking for change, right what if we became the one actually giving change let me explain if we position ourselves to give them what they want versus us asking them for what we want we will then create an established relationship we will create trust we will put them in a place of reciprocity meaning that they appreciate you they value you and they will therefore pay it forward back to you so how do you do this tip number one is you have to figure out a way to attract leads. I know we're looking for a referral relationship or referral partner because they give us leads, but you have to look at that as, as the long game. It's not like, hey, you know, can I work with you? Give me some leads and, and I'll help you get your borrower approved. No, you actually have to be the one that delivers the buyer or the borrower or the seller, especially with all these rules that are, that are you know, soon to change on the realtor side. So how you do that is you can, there's so many different things. I know a lot of people say make content and I've been preaching that for years, but the problem is when you make content, you're too buttoned up, you're too branded. You know, you got your company shirt on, right? You're buttoned up, um, you're too professional, you're too scripted. It pushes them away. 
because just like when you hear infomercial, it pushes us away, we wanna change the channel, right? Instead, you gotta be authentic. So how to be authentic is meaning that you're actually more concerned about the recipient of the message. You're more concerned about, like me, I'm more concerned about you getting value from this video. I'm not concerned about you going to my program or go on my website or join my community or hire me for a one hour mentoring. I'm not focused on that. I'm actually focused on serving you value because if I serve you value, then you're gonna go check out my community. You're gonna go check out my channel. You're gonna, you're gonna like this video. So I, remember, I already know I gotta earn that from you. So if we approach it like this and we start putting content out there, what would that look like? It would look just like this. I'm charging my car, right? Like one cool thing about having an electric car is that you got time to burn while, while, while you charge it up, right? But you could be different. Maybe you're on your patio drinking coffee or maybe you're walking home from the gym. It has to be authentic. You will be become better not only by reps, but when your intentions change. The problem with a lot of LOs making content is because their intentions are to get deals, to get a sale. When you don't worry about that, and you're more focused about actually serving value, you're going to attract what it is you want. So I did a video with Min Nguyen, the channel's of What's a Mortgage? He's a perfect example. He delivers value, super authentic. He gets like a thousand DMs a month. These are leads. You know how valuable that is? He can approach any realtor and get the top broker, but it took time to get there. You just need to start. Don't be focused or worried about the likes or you got 12 followers, right? Don't worry about that. Worry about consistency, worry about the reps and worry about just putting it out there because it will grow, it will gain momentum. So step number one is find a way to attract what it is you want. And what I mean by that are the leads, you know? Get in certain communities, like single parent communities, females out there, get in communities about, with single moms, right? Get associated with people who recently went through divorce, get associated with wealth planners, CPAs, they are connected to what it is you want. And instead of going to those communities and asking for change with your handout, go there to serve value. And I'm serving value by educating you. You need to do the same thing. So when you're shooting content, talk about real shit. Like talk about things that you know are things that other people are fearful of. So on your way to the open house, when your employer tells you to go to the open house, shoot a video while you're driving. Of course, be safe, right? But talk about it say, hey, you know, you things to know before you buy a house, right? You know, before you go to an open house and now you're shooting video because you're on your way to the open house. And what happens? You warm yourself up and you become a little bit more confident when you go into that open house. And I think people really, you know, are attracted to that. But here, step number two is besides creating a brand, creating a content, some sort of magnet to capture information so you can then deliver to realtors. Step number two is that you have to document wins. Look at your past clients, look at past purchases, right? Any realtors you ever have worked with and, and you have to somehow document like testimonials. You have to find a creative way. A good way would be a Zoom call with a past client or a good way would be a Zoom call with maybe an escrow agent or a realtor you did work with that is, you know, is really favorable with you. And what you wanna do is collect testimonials where they're actually sharing like, hey, it was great to work with Daniel, made sure our loan closed. You know, he anytime I called, he answered the phone and it's always geared around the the common fears of what realtors go through hey i love working with daniel he and i you know we we both collaborated and worked on a team so that our client the buyer or the seller they understood what was involved now you're getting a testimonial from the seller you're getting a testimonial from the buyer the client right oh i loved working with daniel does that make sense because this then becomes living proof and that can also be shared with referral partners so you got a CPA or an attorney that you helped out, get get it, find a way to get a testimonial and keep it. Not on your company's website, invest a couple bucks, look into experience.com and collect it. What's cool about experience is that you keep all those testimonials and it blasts them to different platforms like Instagram, Yelp, Zillow, right, Google, and it will do it automatically for you so that way you have a presence. You need social proof because when you talk to people, when you get with realtors, they need to see who you are. Does that make sense? If you don't got nothing out there, they can't necessarily benefit or leverage that. Finally, number three, go on every single platform that you are on right now. Um, you know, not your business platform, you know, probably got a business page that, that it's your name and your NMLS number or your company name, not that one. I'm talking about your personal stuff, your LinkedIn, your Twitter or X, 
right? Your Instagram, your Facebook, and simply make it known what you do. See, the problem is when LOs do this, they paint it up. They paint it up with disclaimers. They, they shoot out rates, right? But actually just say, hey, my name is Daniel. If you don't, you know, Daniel Neekart, for those of you who, who don't know, I actually work in real estate. You know, I help clients buy homes. I make sure that you get connected to the right realtor and I work for you to get the best possible interest rate and they'll work with you to make sure that you find the right home, right? Or some to that effect, but you gotta put it out there and you'll be amazed how many people, you know, they have an idea what you do, but they don't know that they could refer people to you. But if you put it out there and say, hey, you know, the market's changing. If you know of anyone that wants a free analysis, it's just a couple push of a buttons for me and I'm happy to send it to you to tell you what your value's like and what it's projected to be this time next year, right? And we have these tools. These tools are free to us, but sometimes we use it, we shelter it off. But you know how valuable that information is? Like we have uh, Property Rate is a vendor that I use and they do a real deep dive on property values because they are the hub to the appraiser. So, so they'll have like a team of appraisers actually deep dive into the home and say, okay, since you bought the house, what did you do, right? New kitchen, did you add a room? A lot of people are very curious of what their house is worth and what, what it will be worth in the future. So that then becomes an invitation to now contact you. It's like, oh yeah, you know what? Um, once you contact Bill, right? And then they tag them into your post. And then now you're in Bill's DM, like, hey, I'm happy to help you. My auntie just told me that you wanted to get your property assessed. Shoot me over an email and I'll send you over full reports. Really cool. It's gonna let you know a lot of details about your neighborhood that you probably don't know, right? Some to that effect. It's not, let me price out a rate. Are you looking to buy? Are you an investor? No, 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 no you actually have to attract them first and deliver value first. That's the whole theme of this video. Don't be shady, like actually have something of value, whether it's a property report of property analysis, you know, certain details that, you know, your company has on a system. And if you don't have any, again, you're more than welcome to, to message me or join my community, uh, which is Remastered Mind. There's a link below and it's a place, it's a hub that, gives you ideas of like experience.com. You probably didn't even know that existed, but now you do. When you find out of all these tools and you put it together, you then stand out. Now, the reason why these three tips are important is because this positions you to then offer the business. And when you have the business with realtors in their fearful state right now of being scarce, their preferred lender is not giving them leads. Their preferred lender is just because they've been working with them for a long time. So not likely are they giving them leads. They're just waiting for their handout. Be the one that actually gives the business. And you gotta pre-qualify these realtors. When you approach them and you now have, have the business, you get to sound like this. Hey Joe, give me a call. I got a client that's ready to buy in your area. I think he'd be a good match for you, but I got a couple questions first, just kind of give you a heads up on what they're looking for. So before I make the intro, call me back. I gotta ask you a few questions. If you're the right fit, I'm gonna connect you with them today. Now it's different, right? You think that realtor is gonna ignore you now? They're calling you right away. Yeah, what's up, what, what's going on? Cause they need the business. Now that it sounds much better than you calling, hey Joe, this is Daniel Neekar at West Capital Lending. Just wanted to see if I could help you price anything. <laughs> I just wanted to see if I can stop by your open house and be awkward, right? Or, or can I buy you a coffee for the ninth time and talk about the same shit? Be different. I hope this helps because there's a lot of self gen LOs that are out there right now wondering how to get business from realtors. You get business by making noise and moving in a different way. You get business by giving them value first and then the reciprocation comes and that turns into a relationship and guess who's their new preferred lender? You boo boo. Hope you like this video, save it, refer back to it, share it with other people that you think can benefit from it and make sure you check out my community. Link below, it's called Remastermind, it's free. I'll see you there. Bye. Now it's your time to hit the thumbs up if this video helped you. I love engaging with you in the comment section below. Lastly, please share this video with someone else that can benefit from this topic. Thanks for subscribing. Look out for the notification for my next video and I'll see you there.